Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss about the discontinuity. I will discuss an epsilon delta approach to prove the discontinuity of a function at a point. This is the outline of the video. We will see the definitions and uh, then we will be seeing the how to choose epsilon and uh, finally we will see some examples so let us start let f be a real valued function then f is said to be discontinuous at a point a if it is not continuous at that point it means that a function can be either continuous at a point or it can be discontinuous so there are only two possibilities for a function at a point whether it is continuous or discontinuous you all will be aware of uh, epsilon delta definition of continuity at a point to taking its negation gives the definition of discontinuity at a point in terms of epsilon delta f is discontinuous at uh, point uh, a if for some epsilon greater than 0 and for every delta greater than 0 there is a point x delta such that mod x delta minus a less than delta but mod fx delta minus fa is greater than epsilon and uh, this definition can easily be obtained uh, by negating the definition of uh, continuity at a point to be self content here the definition of continuity at a point is included and uh, you can get the definition of discontinuity by negating the definition of continuity let's see what changes from continuity to discontinuity so here is table for continuity the condition is mod fx minus fa is less than epsilon and for discontinuity it is for some x delta mod fx delta minus fa is greater than epsilon and uh, as uh, evident from the table in the case of continuity epsilon is given and in the case of discontinuity delta is given in the case of continuity we need to find uh, delta that depends on epsilon and obviously that may depend on the point a and uh, in the case of discontinuity we need to find two, two things one is uh, epsilon another is x so corresponding to every delta there should be an x delta that may be same for every delta but uh, that takes for every delta and uh, there are modifiers uh, for epsilon delta and x so in the case of continuity epsilon that uh, condition should be held for every epsilon in the case of discontinuity it uh, should be held for at least one epsilon in fact if uh, it holds for a uh, epsilon then it holds for all the values less than epsilon for every epsilon you need to find at least one delta in the case of continuity and in the case of discontinuity you need to find epsilon and uh, the condition of discontinuity that is mod fx delta minus fa greater than epsilon should be held for every delta okay and uh, similarly the last condition the condition of continuity should be held for every x and uh, the condition for discontinuity should be held for at least one x that is x delta i have seen many students they are confused about the procedure how to give a proof for the discontinuity so here I will discuss how you should proceed before proceeding there you should note some facts 
द एपसाइलन डेल्टा डेफिनेशन डजेंट टेल यू दैट फंक्शन इज कॉन्टीन्यूस और डिसकॉन्टीन्यूस यू नीड टू नो इन एडवांस दैट फंक्शन इज कॉन्टीन्यूस और डिसकॉन्टीन्यूस एपसाइलन डेल्टा इज एन अप्रोच टू डिमोस्ट्रेट द फैक्ट दैट द फंक्शन इज कॉन्टीन्यूस और डिसकॉन्टीन्यूस यू कैन फाइंड आउट द लेफ्ट हैंड लिमिट राइट हैंड लिमिट and uh, then compare that uh, left hand limit and uh, right hand limit if we summarize the problems that we face um, i was also facing sometimes ago what should be epsilon the first question generally we start with epsilon right so the first question is what should be the epsilon it can be any value a some particular value in the case of discontinuity in the case of continuity we know that the condition should be held for every epsilon then what should be delta corresponding to this epsilon and finally do i really need to care about x as you know that in the case of continuity the condition should be held for every x is it the case with the discontinuity and uh, these all questions were answered in the last table if you understood the table obviously so if you did not understand uh, the table then here are are the answers so to prove the discontinuity epsilon should be small enough to satisfy mod fx delta minus fa greater than epsilon please note epsilon should be small enough okay you have to find one epsilon but there should be small enough to satisfy mod fx delta minus fa greater than epsilon should be satisfied by all delta so you really don't have delta corresponding to epsilon in fact you have epsilon and epsilon then you have all the delta all the real numbers and then finally you need to care about x and you find an x delta for every delta right you find an x delta for every delta so the three questions are answered and uh, the question that is uh, unanswered still is what should be epsilon so here i am going to tell you an approach and uh, which is important uh, especially for this uh, procedure how i am going to calculate epsilon so suppose if is discontinuous at a now let us calculate left term is equal to mod fa minus left hand limit you all know how to calculate left hand limit then you have to find out what is the left hand limit and then you have to take the difference of uh, this left hand limit with function value and this will be the left jump if left jump is non zero then define epsilon is equal to left jump upon 2 so what if left jump is zero or it does not exist then calculate right jump similarly as you calculate left jump this is mod fa minus right hand limit and uh, again if right jump is non zero then define epsilon is equal to right jump upon 2 what if both left and right jump are zero or non existent then you define any jump is equal to mod fa minus y where y is equal to fx is a value that is obtained by an infinite number of points x in every neighborhood of a so you take any neighborhood of a then y appears an infinite number of times then you have to take y and uh, you have to calculate any jump 
एंड फाइनली डिफाइन एप्साइलन इज इक्वल टू एनी जम्प अपॉन टू वंस यू गॉट एप्साइलन नाउ यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट एक्स डेल्टा सो वन केस इज लेफ्ट वेन एप्साइलन इज इन्फिनिटी देन रीडिफाइन एप्साइलन इज इक्वल टू वन सो वेन एवर लेफ्ट हैंड लिमिट और राइट हैंड लिमिट और इन्फिनिटी टेक देम एज इट इज and define epsilon is equal to infinity then finally redefine epsilon to be 1 you can redefine it to any value epsilon is equal to 1 is for my convenience you can define epsilon is equal to anything else as per your convenience you have to calculate x delta depending on delta and their epsilon may play a role to locate that x delta okay so to find x delta i follow an approach first of all uh, i find out an uh, x uh, delta in the neighborhood of uh, that uh, particular point a such that uh, mod f x delta minus f is greater than epsilon and uh, then i find out delta actually i just locate x delta first of all and uh, then i define delta so this is the sigma my sigma then what i do i define x delta to be a uh, function cases whenever delta is greater than equal to sigma then i use this uh, value that i located as x delta and whenever delta is between 0 and sigma then i define x delta by a function let's see some examples which clarify the process so here is an example and uh, this is a step function and we have to prove that it is discontinuous at x is equal to 0 so we have a is equal to 0 if a is equal to 0 the left hand limit is 0 so left jump is 0 uh, minus 0 again the right hand uh, limit is 1 so right jump is mod 1 minus 0 and uh, that is 1 therefore we define epsilon to be 1 by 2 that is 0.5 uh, the required conditions are satisfied now we define x delta for a general delta by the formula x delta is equal to delta over 2 we check the conditions and we see that the conditions are satisfied so taking epsilon is equal to 0.5 and uh, x delta is equal to 0.5 whenever delta is greater than equal to 1 and uh, delta by 2 whenever delta is between 0 and 1 we see all the conditions of discontinuity are satisfied so f is discontinuous at x is equal to a the next question f x is equal to 0 when x is uh, non positive and it is 1 by x whenever x is greater than 0 so to solve this question here we have again prove the discontinuity at x is equal to 0 a is 0 f a is 0 and uh, the left jump is 0 again we find the right hand limit that is infinity and so right jump is infinity so as we said earlier we take epsilon is equal to 1 now we locate uh, an x delta that is 0.5 and corresponding delta that is our sigma is 1 and uh, we see that all the conditions are satisfied next we define 
x delta by delta by 2 for a general delta and we again verify the conditions and we see that the conditions are satisfied. So taking epsilon is equal to 1 and x delta is given on the slide we see that the function satisfies the conditions of uh, discontinuity at uh, the point x is equal to 0. So it is discontinuous at x is equal to 0. Next question. Here it is a tricky question. So we have here a is equal to n and f a is equal to 0. You can verify that uh, these values are correct and uh, left hand limit is 1. So left jump is 1 and we can define epsilon is equal to 0 0.5. We locate x delta at n minus 0 0.25 and corresponding sigma is taken to be 0 0.5 with this sigma and x sigma we verify the conditions conditions are satisfied now for a general delta between 0 and sigma that is 0 0.5 we define x delta is equal to n minus delta pi 2 and again we see that the conditions are satisfied so taking epsilon is equal to 0 0.5 and uh, x delta to be n minus 0 0.25 whenever delta is greater than equal to 0 0.5 and n minus delta y2 whenever delta is between 0 and 0 0.5. We see that uh, all the conditions of discontinuity are satisfied. So f is discontinuous at every integral value of x. Finally we have a question where the left hand limit and right hand limit don't exist. So here we have a is equal to p upon q actually it is a rational number that is not 0. And uh, f a is 1 over q we have taken p and q such that uh, p and q have no common factor. Here we can verify that uh, left hand limit and right hand limit don't exist since there are independent number of uh, rationals in every neighborhood of uh, irrational and vice versa. So what we see that uh, in the neighborhood of P upon Q there are infinite number of irrationals. So the value 0 is obtained at infinite number of points in every neighborhood of P upon Q. So we define any jump that is 1 over mod q therefore epsilon is equal to 1 over 2 mod q. Now we locate an x sigma. So that value we locate uh, between p upon q and p upon q plus 0 0.5 and irrational number. So we take sigma is equal to 1 and we verify that uh, the conditions of discontinuity are satisfied. Similarly, we define x delta for a general delta and we find out that uh, the conditions of discontinuity are satisfied. So f is discontinuous at x is equal to p over q. we have chosen epsilon such that it is less than the jump made at the point either direction. It may be from left, it may be from right and it may be obviously in every neighborhood. So if you use this technique, you will be able to prove the discontinuity very easily. You have to remember that first of all you have to define an epsilon then for every delta you have to define x delta and my approach is that uh, I will define I will locate in fact uh, an x delta and then I will find uh, its delta and finally 
whenever delta is greater than this value i will use the located x delta otherwise i will define it by a formula hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching